Are we still going to have a test for? Or yeah, for the final. I will start it today and it'll be on 9.1 and it will cut off with the final exam. On the third, just like all your other assignments. If anybody hadn't checked. Does that answer your question? Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay. All right, here is the formula I want to go ahead and show you. Um, it's on estimating population. There it is. No. There it is. Now I want you to make one change. I don't want you to put one minus P. I want you to put Q. OK, this is the sample size, finding out the sample size needed for a certain confidence level. OK. And in other words, you're finding out how many people to. How many people to survey, how many people to poll, how many people do you, how many tires do you pull to look for defective tires? Uh, what's the magic number? And that's in. N is equal to P hat Q hat. Times. Z over margin of error squared. I'm going to write it down for you on the whiteboard the way I want you to write it. N is equal to P hat times Q hat. Times Z over margin of error. Squared. OK, so this is the way I want you to write it. And this is alpha over two, meaning the confidence level, you know, your index card. So that's why I want you to write that down. And I want you to put a note. If P hat is not given. Use P hat is equal to point five and Q hat is equal to point five. Okay, write that down and I've got to answer my child's question right quick, so stand by. Are there still going to be bonus questions on this last exam? What did you say? Are there still going to be bonus questions for this exam? On the exam, I do not put bonus questions. Because I feel like I need to challenge the class, all my classes. Now my calculus, my calculus classes, they don't get bonus questions at all. OK, so no, I didn't mean for the final. I was just talking about for this last exam. Last test, yes, you get bonus questions. On unit test, you get bonus questions. Because they answer all of those questions that y'all have at the end of the semester, like bonus points, like, you know, grade. How do you find your grade and stuff like that? So that's why I do that. On the final, it's too late to ask those questions because it's the final exam. And I want to challenge the students, and that's my way of challenging to see if you actually learn something or if you're riding on the bonus questions. OK, so let's do a quick example. I'm just going to do one that they have. Uh, here's one right here. So I want you to write this down. You don't have to write it down word for word. OK, what do you need to write down? What size sample should be obtained? Within three percentage points, that's margin of error. 90 percent confidence level. And P is 0.824. 
So I'm going to write everything down. I'm on. I'm not going to write it word for word. I'm just going to write down what you need. And that is margin of error, 3%. Margin of error equals 3%. I went and bought a box of new black pens yesterday. And I haven't turned on my video. I'm sorry. I don't want to be hypocritical. Unlike some of y'all winged on a pickle that ain't never shown your face. All right, but that's okay. 90% confidence level equals somebody give me the Z score for 90% confidence level, please, off of your index card. 1.64. It's a miracle. And P hat is equal to 0.824. Therefore, somebody tell me what Q hat is. Answer the phone. Q hat. Point, point one seven six. Good job. You're going to have a nice office one day, Mr. Oh, Michelle. And there you go. That's what I wrote down. I didn't write down a single word from that from that question. I wrote down what you what, what you need. Mm -hmm. Now, what are you going to do with those four things? Plug and chug. Good job. You're a winner. Megan, do you want to make a formal complaint about Miss Dennis bothering you? No. <laughs> okay, because I can talk about the part of my head. I got a crazy question. Uh oh, she's got a question. What is it, Miss Dennis? Where'd you get the P hat? Okay, look at the oh. question. Let's go back to the question. Here's the question. Hold on. Tell me where I got P hat. Oh, there it is, right there. And Q hat is the complement of P hat. So take 0.824, subtract it from one, and that's your P hat, a Q hat. I'm going to leave that on the board there for a second. Can't Here. see it. There, how's that? For some reason, I can't pull my whiteboard up same time I got the presentation slide up. Okay, so I'm going to take the my... Ma'am? May I see the whiteboard, please? There you go. Give me time! You're moving kind of like sluggish. We only got a little bit of time. You're such a wife. <laughs> But you got a sense of humor. That's a good thing, Miss Dennis. Thank you. Is that you got to have, have a sense of humor, Z or you'll score. be weaned on a pickle. I love pickles. Z score with um alpha. It's right I'm, here. Index yeah. Index card. Your index card. Yeah, I'm looking at it. So is that ninety percent confidence level? Go over to the green highlighted box. Mm -hmm. It should be 1.64. It is, but I'm saying, what do we call it? Inversion? Inversion? Huh? The inversion or something? Is that what we it's call that? It's called the Z score. Inverse norm. That's oh. how you got it. Oh, okay. It's called the Z score. And here's what it looks like when you plug and chug. N is equal to 0.824. Times 0.176 brackets 1.64 divided by 0 0.03. Now, hold on a second. I got to check that right quick because I always forget. I always forget. Do I put it in as three? Yeah, 0 0.03. I always forget that. So 0 0.03. 
raised to the second power. Now, what's the rule about parentheses? What do you always do with parentheses? You always do parentheses, then what? Exponent. Exponent. Of course, with some students, they start to make up their own way of doing things when you do this. You've been following, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, ever since you were in K through six, okay? And you get to a problem like this, y'all try to go left to right. So take your handy dandy calculator. I'm clearing everything so y'all won't complain because y'all can be divas. 1.64 divided by 0 0.03 equals. Everybody get that? Yes. Raise yes. it to the second power. And then multiply that by 0.176 and by 0.824. And how many people do we need to survey to have a 90% confidence level in our work? We need to survey 434 people. You always round up unless it's an even number. Unless it's 433.0, you always round up. So this will be 434. N is equal to 433.396, which is equal to 434. How many people you think I'm gonna survey if my if my if my formula kicks out 434 people? How many people do you think I'm gonna survey? Now that's not the answer. The answer is 434. Why am I going to up it to 450 or to 500? What's the law of large numbers say back in chapter three? You get out of it what you what? Put into it. Put into it. Lazy people would do 200. Average people would do 434. People that want to do the best they can will do what? A little bit what? Extra. More. A little bit more. So you can be lazy and do 200 and probably not get, uh, there'd be about an 80% confidence level. Or you could just get by with doing 434 or you could exceed and do 450 or 500 surveys. The answer is 434. So look, and you'll see that back here. Right here. Now they got 436. How did they get four? Oh, they did 1.645. Okay, I don't use 1.645, sorry. So they used 1.645, which would give you a little bit different. So you might want to make a note for this book in your on your uh, index card, change 1.64 to 1.645, add a five to it. That way you won't have any errors with your homework or your test. Okay, so let's do another homework problem. That's it. That's all you're going to be tested on. You're going to be tested on P hat, Q hat, margin of error, confidence interval, and finding N. 9.1. That's it. So let's go look at some of your questions. Mr. Michelle, I see you sent some questions. Were they having to do with N or margin of error or what? 
Uh, yes, sir. Numbers eight and nine were mostly on margin of error. Okay, let's go there and, first. And and I'm just guilty. what we discussed today. Okay. So let's go with eight and nine. That way I'll kill two birds with one stone. Bird killer. Yep. I'm racist. I got a gun. I got <laughs> an arsenal. Eight right there. And I'm a veteran. So I am I'm I'm worse. I'm a I'm a I'm I'm a terrorist. A researcher wishes to estimate the proportion of adults who have high speed Internet access. What size sample? OK, this is OK. This is what we're going over right now. What size sample should be obtained? I'm going to make this bigger for you. Hold on, let's see if I can maybe will this work? Yeah, that'll work. Make it a little bit bigger. No, nope, it didn't. I can't, for some reason, I can't make the questions bigger. I don't know why. Okay, a researcher, I'll write everything out that you need. I'm not gonna write all the words. Okay, a researcher wishes to estimate the proportion of adults who have high speed internet access. What size sample, so N is equal to question mark, uh, if she wishes to estimate to be within 4.04 .04 equals margin of error. Now they didn't say 4%, so you don't have to change. You don't have to change that to a decimal. It's already given as a decimal. 99% confidence level. Somebody look up 99% confidence level and tell me what it is. Is it 2.58 or 2.48? 2.58. Equals 2.58, which is your Z sub alpha over 2. And she uses P hat equals 0.46. So this is A, P hat is equal to 0.46, therefore Q hat, somebody give me Q hat. Point 0.54. 0.54. Okay, so here's what, I know what B is. B says, what if you don't have a P hat? All right, there you go. So we're going to do A first, and we're going to plug in P and Q, and 2.58 over 0 0.04 squared. Somebody's blowing up my phone, so go ahead and be plugging those in. We have a Q hat chart. Yeah, there it is. No, oh, Q hat no. is a complement of P hat. Oh. Subtract it from one. Hold on a minute, Walt. Hold on. If Q hat is the P hat subtracted by one, how come it's not point forty five? You take one and then minus it by from what six. What so is I, what is what is probability go to zero to what, Miss Dennis? Um, from the get go, zero to what? I don't remember zero. I'm going to give you the answer right here. Oh, zero one? to what? One. one. What's the area under the curve? 
One. One. So what do you subtract your P hat from to get your Q hat? You subtract it from one. There you, there you go. Right, but. Uh, What's $1 minus 46 cent? Uh, is that how, so it's 1.00, okay. Think of it like a dollar. Mm-hmm. A dollar minus 46 cent is what? 54 cent. That's how you find your complement. Oh, it's a dollar, not not just point, it's not point one. Okay. No, it's one dollar, yes. Or 1.001, one. Mm -hmm. one. Mm -hmm. All right, now, let's plug and chug to get A. N for A is equal to 0.46 times 0.54 bracket 2.58 divided by 0 0.04 squared. So we're going to take our handy dandy calculator. We're going to do the math. Clear. Clear. So, 2.58. Oops. 2.58 divided by 0 0.04. Somebody tell me what you get so we can make sure everybody's getting the same thing. 64.5. Okay, and raise that to the second power. Somebody say what number that is. 4,160.25. And then multiply that by 0.54 times 0.46. 1, 1,034.00. That's the answer. You always round up. Unless you get an even zero, like 1,033.00000. You round up. So that would be N of A is 1,034. Now, what does B say? Let's type in 1,034. Now, what does B, what does say? B say? Okay, okay, turn down your microphone. Who was that? Was that you, Miss Milcom? What's so funny? There's a fishnet in the bathroom, and my boss just asked me who's been fishing in the toilet. <laughs> I bet that was you, wasn't it? Uh, okay. So somebody tell me, what does B say? She doesn't use P hat. Now, what did I tell you about if P hat is not given? Um, what does it use, say right here? So instead of using 0.84 or point, you're going to use 0.5 right there and 0.5 right there. So plug and chug the same problem, except you're going to put in 0.5 and 0.5. So here's B. N is equal to 0.5 times 0.5 square root or squared 2.58 divided by 0 0.04. I'm going to highlight these two pink to match that pink note or red note that I wrote down. If P hat is not used, you plug in 0.5 for both. And I'm going to write that in red right here. If P hat is not used, Meaning if you don't have a number for P hat, 
or they say not using the critical value, then you use 0.5 for P and Q. The question will tell you that they're not using it. So now we just take that number. What was that number squared? Does anybody remember that number squared? Okay, I'll look on the calculator. What was it? 4160.25? Was it 4160.25? Yes. Multiplied by 0.5, which would be 2000, well, 2080. Yeah, 2080 and half of 2080 is 540. So it'd be around 540. Okay, 1040, sorry. 1040, so 1040, and I'm gonna raise that to 1041. So what are they trying to tell you here? Does it make much of a difference? Does it make no. much of a difference to have a critical value at 99%? Not really. Let me ask you a question. How many people are you going to survey if this one spits out 1034 and 1041? I'm going to survey at least 1050. If I was a statistician. Either one of these, if, it, if both of these spit out 1041 and 1034, I'm going to, would you do 1100? Yeah, 1100. Why not go any higher? Well, you don't want to go any higher because then you're just being wasteful. Okay. Mr. Michelle, does that help answer your question on how to do that? Yes, sir, it does. Thank okay. you. Okay. You said number nine also? Yes, sir, but I believe it's the same concept too. Okay. So let's go back one. Did anybody have one that kind of aggravated them since we did eight and nine? Anybody have one that kind of? Well, if this would let me off, okay. Uh, number seven actually had like a couple parts to it, but I was. Okay, it says it. a random sample of 200, uh, 1,029 adults in a certain large country was asked, do you pretty much think televisions are a necessity or a luxury? Uh, now, 20 years ago, I'd say it was a you know necessity. Now, it ain't worth a flip. I used to say, you know, you could get the news. <laughs> news is a joke now. Do you pretty much think, okay, of the 1029, 518 indicated that they are a luxury they could go without. So there's your P hat right there. So write that question down. I'm just going to write down what's needed. So N is equal. Somebody tell me what N is equal to. Would that be the um, 1029? Because it's the what number? Biggest number. Biggest number. Thank you. And X is equal to 518. Well, right now, they ain't giving you anything. So the only thing you can do right now, I don't see a confidence interval. Only thing I see right now is you can get P hat and Q hat. Now let's see what they ask for later. After I type in answers, they probably will ask for something. So the only thing I can get right now is P hat. 518 over 1029. Somebody give me a P hat. Give me just give me two digits. That's fine. Well, it's 518 divided by 1029, almost 0. 0.5. 0. 0.5. Is yeah, it 0. 0.5 even? 
No, it's point five zero three. Five zero three. Did everybody get that? Yes. Therefore, Q hat is equal to point four nine seven. Somebody check my math there. Yes, sir. Okay, so at this point, unless they give us more information, that's all we can find. So let's go type those two in. Point five oh three. Okay, verify that all the requirements for conducting a confidence interval, the sample. The sample is stated to be a simple random sample. It says that somewhere, a random sample right there. The value of P hat is not known, or what are they asking here? The value of P hat is 0.503, which is greater than or less than 10. And the sample size is stated to be, no, the proportion size, we'll let's see. The population, I hate when these Philadelphia lawyer questions. The sample size is stated is can be assumed. I don't know about that. 5% of the population size. I doubt I got all that right. I hate Philadelphia lawyer questions. I'm just going to write it and you fill it out and that's We'll do what we do with Philadelphia lawyer questions. We just, there it is. NPQ, write that down. Okay, I didn't know they were asking for that. All right, NPQ is 257.238, which is greater than or equal to 10. And the sample size, I mean, we did get that right, can be assumed to be population size. We got that far. Right. I didn't know they were asking NPQ on this. Okay, so right now the sample size is stated to be a simple random sample, which it does right here, random sample. The, the value of NPQ, you need to do that in your calculator, NPQ, which we just found P hat and Q hat. So multiply those three together is greater than 10. And the sample size can be assumed to be the sample size right here is 518 is less than or equal to 5% of 1029. That's just the Philadelphia lawyer part. I'm not really concerned about that. Okay, there's our there's our C. 95% confidence level. Somebody give me the Z score for a 95% confidence level, please. Uh, One point nine seven. Point nine six. Okay, so write that down, and then I'm going to ask for a confidence interval. Construct and interpret a 95% confidence interval. Okay, so let's do that. Confidence interval, margin of error. Margin of error is equal to what? Our Z score times times PQ, P hat, Q hat over what? N raised to the 0.5 power. Now you could square root of those. I just raise it to the 0.5 power. So what are we going to do? 
Plug what? Plug and chug. Plug and chug. So 1.96 times 0.503 times 0.497 over 1029 raised to the 0.5 power. So I'm going to do that right now. So clear. Clear. So 0.503 times 0.497 divided by 1029. Raise that to the 0.5 power. And multiply that by 1.96. So your margin of error is around 3%, but I'm going to put 0 0.0305. Margin of error is equal to 0 0.0305 or 0 0.03 or 3%. Now, that's the margin of error. We haven't constructed our confidence interval. I'm going to do that in green because I want you to realize that we still have Hello? So what do you do to the right of P with your margin of error? Do you add it or subtract it? Hubert, Hubert uh, would you mind repeating what you just said? You just cut off a little. What did I just say? I can't remember what I just said. <laughs> I said that the margin of error that we still have to do, that we still have to construct the confidence interval. And I'm going to write the confidence interval in green because that's the answer to our question. Is that what you're talking about? So what I do I so, do yes, with the confidence interval on the right side of P hat? Just like the standard deviation in the mean. What do I do on the right side? Do I add it or subtract add. it? So I'm going to add, let's see, I'm going to add uh, 0.503 plus 0.03. Okay, and on the left, what am I going to do? Subtract. I'm going to subtract it. So 0.503 minus. 0 0.03. Okay, p hat less than or equal to less than or equal to. All right, somebody take 0 0.503, which is almost 50 cent, and add 3 cent to it. That's 0 0.533. And what is 50 cent minus 3 cent? 47. So somebody tell me what 0 0.503 minus 0 0.03 is. It's going to be around 47 cent, but it's going to be, it's going to have a third digit. 0 0.47. 0 0.47. Okay. Yes, sir. That right there is your confidence interval. So I am 90, I am 95% confident that your p value for this data is going to fall between 47 cent and 53 cent, or 0 0.473 and 0 0.533. 
Hey. Hey, Miss Macagina. All right. I'm in Minnesota. I forgot about I'm the sorry, time change. What? What? I forgot about, I'm in Minnesota and I forgot about the time change. That's all right. You can watch the recording. <laughs> but announcements today is the final will only include 9.1 and the last test will only include 9.1. So all everybody needs to do to finish out, we're not going to meet Friday. So because I got orientation, I just found out yesterday. Um, so let me write this down for everybody. So that way you can't say you didn't understand. Number one. The last test. Which is called. Unit, what four? Last test will only include 9.1 material. Therefore, you do not have to do 9.2 because I know somebody's fixing to ask that. All right. I will delete it. Number two, 9.1 will be on the final with all your other stuff. And number three, if you want to review for the final, go to your grade book. Go to review for whatever test you want to review and print it out. You have to go under help. You know, under the help, the help me, you know, feature and print out the whole test. OK, and of course, all the dates are on my lab's math. I'm not going to answer any dates. OK, anybody got a question about content right here? I have a question on the homework part since it's just one or 9.1. Will the 9.2 just be taken away? Yeah, I just said that I'll omit it. <laughs> I will omit 9.2. I ain't done it yet, so please don't go there and look. I haven't had a chance to do it. So the only thing that you are responsible for for 9.1 is make sure you can find P hat, Q hat, make sure you can find the margin of error and construct a confidence interval like we just did and make sure you can find in if needed okay so the margin of error is your z score times p hat q hat over n raised to the 0.5 power and that's equal to x over n and that's equal to what is it uh point p hat q hat times uh, Z over uh, what? Uh, margin of error, margin of error, and that's raised to the second power. Now the confidence interval, P hat, less than or equal to, less than or equal to, you're gonna take P hat plus margin of error, and P hat minus, margin of error just like one standard deviation and of course q hat is the complement of p hat now that's it that's all i'm going to ask you on 9.1 those questions that we went over last class and this class we went over like three questions today or four three or four questions about we went over two within and I think we went over two or three with confidence interval or, you know, so we went over these two are the same pretty much. Uh, and we went over a couple of these. You're talking about 10 questions maybe on the test. OK, as far as 9.1, no 9.2. And the final exam, so all you need to focus on is 9.1 homework. You need to focus on that. You need to focus on 
the 9.1 test, which is called the last test, and you need to focus on the final. That's what y'all need to focus on, those three things between now and the third. No questions? All right, y'all have been a great group, and I'll be honest with you, you and the Math 155 that I have, and the Math at Night, the, the night course, y'all have been the great, great communicators. Thank you. Uh, I'm not, not all of you. Some of you really suck at it. Okay? <laughs> but there's about five or six of y'all in here that are communicators, and you're going to do well. The ones that shrivel up in a corner and don't talk, you need to get out of it and get with the real world. Y'all have a good day and a good weekend, and if you need me, I will be in uh, AC 136 Friday helping students, but I can still team, you know, when I'm not helping students. Let me know. Mr. Yes, ma'am. Can you talk to me after class? Yeah. Rest Thank of y'all, see ya. Thank you, Hubert. Have a good one. See ya. Thank you so much. Good luck, everybody. Come see me in another class later Bye. on. Bye-bye.